before us for the first time in the history of man. Nations combined to fight against nations using the crude weapons of those days. The Second World War involved every continent on the globe, and men turned to science for new devices of warfare, which reached an unparalleled peak in their capacity for destruction. And now, fought with the terrible weapons of super science, menacing all mankind and every creature on Earth, comes the War of the Worlds. Hello again, modelers, and welcome back to the Gearhead Workshop. And uh, today we've got uh, another little uh, surprise project that uh, Gene dropped on me, our buddy Gene Davis from Facebook. Uh, he wanted one of these uh, Martian war machines built from the old uh, 50s movie War of the Worlds. So what we got here on the bench is the uh, the Pegasus Hobbies kit and. Uh, in usual fashion here at the workshop, I've already been inside this box, but uh, we just kind of put it back in there. We're going to take a peek in here and just kind of look at what's in the box and uh, kind of talk about what I've got done already and what we're what we're going to do to it, hopefully. Uh, <coughs> first up, of course, uh, we've got the main hull of the war machine, and um, it's kind of weird. Um, I guess uh, they. You know, use different plastics. Uh, I built this kit myself before, and mine was molded in kind of like a more of a, a tannish gold kind of color. And this one's in uh, gray. I'm pretty sure it's the same type of plastic. Though. It's like I think it's an ABS type plastic. But uh, pretty nice. Um, what we've done so far with this is um, we're going to be using um, lighting kit from uh, Ralph at Tenet Controls. His War of the Worlds kit. And uh, we're also going to be uh, tying it into one of his remote control boards. So this thing will be remote control to operate the functions. And uh, also, um, just for this particular application, Ralph is going to be modifying the uh, the main board to uh, have an external audio jack. So uh, Gene can hook this into his home surround sound system. And uh, the plan uh, with the ship for the display is... Um, Jeans buying a, a glass dome for this, so this thing's going to go on like a placard base with the glass dome over top of it to kind of be an homage to the shield that was used on the ship in the movie. And uh, we're probably going to end up putting a box underneath of that to uh, house the remote board and the main control board for the lighting and stuff in the ship. And uh, let's see, um, we've also um, got to look this up real quick on my phone because it's new um, I've also got a group going for this on Facebook uh, just take me a second to pull it up so I'll make sure I get the name right because <laughs> uh, you know Facebook groups sometimes they, the names got to get kind of long just because there's sometimes other groups concerning the same thing uh, the groups called uh, Pegasus 148 Martian War Machine builds only slash tips and tricks so if you're into maybe you know checking this build out otherwise and uh, maybe some other bills and things to do with the Pegasus War Machine kit uh, just go check that Facebook page out Pegasus 148 Martian War Machine builds only slash tips and tricks and uh, let's see we'll get back to the kit here um, for Ralph's lighting kit we um, I got in touch with Ralph to see if he would uh, kind of send me a, an image of uh, the instructions beforehand so I could know um, kind of what I had to do for the to put the lighting in here which was um, there was a wall in front here on both halves of the hole they had to be removed because there's going to be a lighting strip behind the uh, front lens and uh, we went ahead and drilled out some holes for the I don't know what you call those things I'd call them gravity thrusters or whatever we had to drill out some holes there for some LEDs that are going to go in there at uh, 5 millimeter. So we've got the wall all removed and all those are drilled out and ready to put lighting in. And uh, all the kit, we've, we've light blocked everything just to make sure no light leaks out from anywhere through the kit. Um, I did two coats of primer and uh, two coats of uh, black on, on the main parts that needed to be light blocked, which was these two hole halves. 
and the two clamshell halves to the eye that go on the cobra head. And uh, this part, uh, same thing, we had to remove a half a wall up here so uh, the lens will be open for the lighting to come through. And uh, on each wing tip here, uh, Ralph has uh, two 1.8 uh, millimeter LEDs. One is in green, and I believe the others are in white for a flash effect. So uh, we've cut a little notch in here. I've used some of my LEDs that I have here on hand just to judge. So we, we got our little slots cut to put our two little LEDs you know, in each wing tip pretty much slammed together. So we're all ready there for lighting. And uh, the kit's already set up with a little a deal here that comes down out of the cobra head and passes through the bottom of the hull. So we've already got kind of a way to pass our wiring out of here. Uh, the only thing that's still up in the air is where the pole's going to go in. I've still, still got to get a pole to fit this or a piece of tubing. And um, I'm not sure whether we're going to do it or not. I may talk to Gene. Um, some people just put the pole right in here as is. The um, let me grab the part here. The kick base goes in here like this, and you get this little disc that that fills that in. Um, we may end up taking and cutting this disc off and use it as a plug and glue this in here, and we'll mask off this door maybe, and you know, kind of fill this in smooth and just have the hole, you know, so you don't see that little ring, but. I just had to talk to Gene and see if he's even worried about it. You know, ship's mostly going to be viewed like this. It's really out of view, but uh, we may do it anyway. And I think like, that was it for the hull. So we'll get him off to the side here. And the plastic. And uh, the other half that I already messed with was these two halves to the uh, cobra head, the little clamshell halves to the cobra head. And um, I still got tape on here. Um, We'll go ahead and see if we can get that off while we're here. It's kind of finicky. But um, we had to do some modifying to this uh, for lighting. Which, uh, let me get this other piece of tape off and uh, maybe we can see it a little better. Uh, you might not be able to see it, but um, I'll point out what we had to do. Uh, the, the main thing we had to do, or you'll have to do with this kit, is uh, right here, they give you a little notch right here. It's almost like it's made for an LED, because there's nothing to do with the lens that actually goes past this little wall point right here. So we've opened it up right in here, and you also have to go in here and cut a trench in this lower half, you know, to be able to pass two wires out. Actually, with this... Um, set up is going to be three so I've tried to make it as big as possible as uh, what, what Ralph has for this is a bicolor LED so you've got uh, uh, three leads for the bicolor LED you have a hot and a hot you know one for each color and then a, in a central ground so hopefully we got enough room in here we'll test fit it if not we'll try and groove this thing out some more or maybe even try and attempt grooving the other half but I really don't want to because that's the part that's even thinner than this part you can kind of see there's not much here it's not very thick at all and the other half um, we did the same thing except for we didn't do anything back here yet. like I said I'm trying to avoid doing it to that part but we've go ahead and cut out the hole here we've opened this up so the LED can shine light to the lens up front and uh, of course we did the same thing we've like blocked both halves with two coats of primer and two coats of black on the inside and uh, otherwise, in the kit, uh, not much to say here. This is a little plug that the uh, Cobra Eye neck mounts into, and um, we've got a little pass-through hole for the wiring. I've made an extra hole just in case I need it, but I think we'll be all right with just the, the kit hole. Um, the thing is, if you're going to light this guy, um, this hole's originally intended for a screw, so when you put this in the hole half, you put a screw in the bottom, and the Cobra head can't come out, but... Uh, most people aren't going to be going all crazy with this thing, and the, and the thing fits pretty good, so you pretty much got to give up that screw, and this thing just sits in the model. There's uh, there's no real good way to attach it, you know, otherwise, and still pass your wires through, so that's what we're going to go with. And uh, the uh, Cobra head neck itself, when you get the kit, you've got uh, like pin bosses in this half, and pins coming out of this half, and those had to be cut out of the way to pass the wire down from the cobra head down through the ship for the lighting in the cobra head so we've clipped the pins on this part and went in here with our exacto 
and trimmed out the pin balls to make room for the wire. We'll, we'll check everything when we start putting the wire in, but uh, should be enough room. If not, we'll kind of go in there and just trim up a little bit more. And uh, let's see, um, here we got the, uh, the Cobra head eye, which is in the kit is two pieces. You get the clear piece and a red insert, and I've already taken the red insert and, and put that into the clear part. You know, that's pretty much how it goes, so we've already kind of just stuck that in there. There's no real need to glue it. It's a really tight fit. If you get the kit though, you got to kind of take note. It is keyed. You've got a little key on uh, one side of both of the parts that, that tell you how they go together. They only, they're only meant to go together one way. So if you're having trouble, if you get this kit put in, make sure you've got your keys lined up or, or you're going to have trouble getting it in there. You might actually potentially crack the clear part trying to shove it in there. And um, in this other bag here, we've got our green clear parts which consists of our, our front lens which is, uh, they, they really pretty much nailed this stuff out of the box it's, it's, it's really looks cool and we've got our, our two wing tips like I said those will get a green light and a flasher for the laser pulse effect or whatever they call it I can't remember what exactly what they called it death rays and uh, we've got three of these little guys these are the for underneath the ship for the gravity thrusters, thrusters, uh, anti-gravity beams, whatever the Martians were, would have called it. <laughs> so those are the inserts for those. And uh, lastly, we've got the uh, what's left of the stock base, which, we're, like I said, we're not using. The only thing is um, we are going to probably go in and, and cut out this plaque and use the plaque either outside or, or inside the... Uh, the dome cover when uh, when Gene gets that so um, that's probably the next thing that I'll be doing on this is uh, going and cut this plaque out and get it all cleaned up and we'll try and get that all painted up so I guess we'll call it done for part one on this get everything back in the box here and um, uh, I guess if you've been watching the channel, I did um, I did a video on um, the uh, wooden plane build that I did for um, Amazing Scale Modeler's uh, community build for um, wooden build. Um, I'm going to try and be getting the, uh, the second part of that up here real soon. So if you were kind of liking the first part, uh, be on the lookout for the second part. Uh, Second part is uh, just a bunch of clips I did as I was putting it together. I'm just going to kind of edit those all together into one little video so you can kind of get a little walkthrough of um, the different stages I was putting putting it together. And um, other than that, I guess uh, we'll call this one done and uh, we'll see you on the next update, whatever that may be. And until then, everybody take care, happy modeling, and peace.